Hi, I'm James, and this is Amy. We spent the last year living and working in Scotland and exploring its incredible landscapes. But now we're embarking on our biggest adventure yet. We've quit our jobs to travel for a year, or at least until the money runs out. We're currently two weeks into our New Zealand road trip. Last time, we climbed Auckland's largest volcano. We've just reached the top of the track and we've got amazing views on both sides. Discovered stunning beaches in the Coromandel. This beach is ridiculous. And explored Rotorua's geothermal wonders. Wow, that was some of the bluest water I've ever seen. All while living in a van. This is why you hire a camper van in New Zealand, to come to places like this. But now, with our plans changed due to bad weather, we've decided to take a detour to an often overlooked region of the North Island, Taranaki. Join us as we explore this less visited region, from its picturesque hiking trails to its incredible black sand beaches, before heading south for a slice of city life in New Zealand's eclectic capital, Wellington. We were on our way to Waitomo, a small village known for the vast labyrinth of caves and underground rivers beneath its surface. We have made it to Waitomo, and pretty much the main reason that people come here is to go and explore the glowworm caves. So that's what we're on our way to do now. The one we're going to see is called the Ruakuri Cave. We wanted to go and do the Waitomo glowworm caves, but apparently due to the weather, all the caves have flooded, so it's not possible to see the glowworms. So we're just gonna be going to the one cave today. Ruakuri is the longest cave system in Waitomo. It's made of limestone which formed under the sea millions of years ago. Over time, it was eroded by underground rivers, creating this network of subterranean caves. The guided tour took us down into the caves, where we saw stalactites, stalagmites, and incredible rock formations formed over millions of years, as well as fossils of sea creatures from when this region was beneath the ocean. The cave is also home to a small colony of glowworms, which use sticky fishing lines to catch flying insects that live in the cave. We left the caves and headed towards Taranaki. Due to its out of the way location, four hours west of Topor, Taranaki is often overlooked by tourists who drive straight past it on their way south to Wellington. But with our hike cancelled, we had the perfect opportunity to visit this less explored region of the North Island. As we approached, we finally caught a glimpse of the imposing volcano from which the region takes its name. We've just arrived into Egmont National Park and we've pulled over at the side of the road because Mount Taranaki volcano has just come into view. The next morning, we got up early to do a hike in Egmont National Park. We've come to Dawson Falls Visitor Center to do a walk around Mount Taranaki behind me there. And as you can tell by all the extra layers I'm wearing, it's a lot colder here. Apparently it snowed a couple of nights ago. Home to the spectacular Taranaki volcano, Egmont National Park is a hiker's paradise. On our first day, we did two amazing walks in the Dawson Falls area. The first was the Wilkie's Pools track, an easy two kilometre loop that took us through lush forest, across rushing streams, and had stunning views of the volcano the whole way up to the beautiful Wilkie's Pools. The 
there are some really nice walks around here. The first one we did was to Wilkie's Pools and we just come out for our second walk to go and see Dawson Falls. The weather wasn't meant to be very good today, so rather than doing another walk around Mount Taranaki, we decided to come to New Plymouth on the coast, and we've discovered this incredible black sand beach. Very cool. The west coast of New Zealand's North Island is renowned for its rugged black sand beaches. They're black due to the presence of volcanic minerals in the sand, created by past eruptions of Mount Taranaki and deposited by the Tasman Sea's powerful tides. We wandered along this stunning stretch of beach until the sun went down and found ourselves a local campsite about 100 metres from the ocean. After three weeks living in a van, we were really starting to understand the appeal of van life. The freedom it gave us to travel at our own pace and change our plans at a moment's notice. To chase the good weather and escape the bad. To cook our own meals on the road. And to see places we wouldn't normally get to visit. That evening, at our campsite in New Plymouth, we were treated to the best sunset of our trip so far. So yesterday was meant to be the rainy day, which is why we went to New Plymouth, and it ended up being quite a nice day. Today was supposed to be sunny all day, 0% chance of rain. So we've come back to Mount Taranaki to go and do a walk, and yet it has been raining all morning. We're still gonna do the walk, but we're just learning not to trust the weather forecast here in New Zealand. made it to Puakai Hut, which is about one and a half hours up Mount Taranaki, and it was raining pretty much the whole time. So we've just stopped here to rest and for a bit of shelter, and the weather has just started to clear up a little bit, because we have another 30-ish minutes to go to the Tarn, which is our destination today. Making friends.
just made it back. There was no view from the top. On a clear day, you're supposed to be able to see a reflection of the mountain in the water, but there was absolutely nothing there today. But it was still a really nice walk. So we've been in Taranaki for a few days and it's really surprised us. Even though it's been pretty rainy here, it's been one of my favourite places in the North Island so far. It's got everything, it's got great hikes, it's got great beaches and it's got a pretty big city too. And because it's less popular, it's a lot less busy than some of the other places in the North Island. It is a bit of a detour from the typical route down the North Island, but if you've got the time it's definitely worth the visit. After a few days in Taranaki, it was time to head to our final stop in the North Island, the country's capital, Wellington. While we were there, we took a break from the camping stove and enjoyed a few luxuries that you can only get in a city. We discovered that there's also a surprising amount of nature in Wellington. From the city, we did a short but steep hike up Mount Victoria to a lookout with spectacular views across the city. Mount Victoria was also used as a filming location for one of the most iconic scenes in Lord of the Rings. Right now, I'm standing in the exact place where Frodo and the other hobbits hide from the ring raids for the first time. I think I'm a bit too big to be a hobbit. And what's interesting about this location is that Wellington is just down there. We're only about a 10 minute walk from the city. You imagine all of the locations for Lord of the Rings being in really remote places. But this is one that you can really easily visit. After a few days in the city, our time in the North Island had come to an end. We made our way to the ferry terminal where we'd be catching a boat to the South Island. Okay, it's time to leave the North Island now and head to the South Island. We've had a few very nice days in Wellington but now we are sitting in the queue for the ferry, which is gonna take us to the South Island. us on the boat and on our way to the South Island. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video from the North Island. We will be back again, but for now, I'm really excited to go and explore the South. Next time, we start our adventures in the South Island and explore the stunning coasts, historic wineries, Cheers. and famous hiking trails of Marlborough and Abel Tasman.